In this video, we're going to start by creating a budget spreadsheet. I should quickly jump in here. If you don't want to make a budget spreadsheet, but instead you just want to have a budget template already ready to go, I have an ultimate budget template that I've already created in Microsoft Excel that you can go and download. So check out that link here and you can just start right there budgeting. If you do want to make your own, stay here. By the end of this video, the spreadsheet will be good enough for you to use and keep a budget on your own. So you can stop here or we'll continue going forward and you can learn additional more advanced features of building that spreadsheet. So we're going to dive right in and talk about how to get started on creating your budget spreadsheet today. So to create your budget spreadsheet, there are three different tools that I recommend that you use. There's number one, open source, open office, which is made by Apache. And you can use calc, which is just like Excel, but with a few less features, I guess you could say. And then you have Google Drive, which I believe they call sheets when you're using the Excel function there. Or you can use Microsoft Excel if you have that already. Either one of those is going to be great. Just pick out of the three, open up a spreadsheet, and get ready to go. We're going to jump in in just a moment here, but the first thing I want to do is talk about the top three things that a budget needs to accomplish, and we're going to make sure are included in our first simple budget spreadsheet. So number one is that we are going to want to make sure that we have a clear-cut plan for the month. So we're going to have at least one column that will tell us what we're planning to do. The second part is what actually happened. We're going to make sure that we have a column that tells us what actually happened. And a third column, number three, we're going to have it tell us what the difference was, whether we did good or bad in that area. So now we're going to dive right in and we are going to get budgeting and creating our own budget spreadsheet. I'm going to go ahead and build mine in Google Drive. So if you want to follow directly along, you can go to drive.google.com and if you have a Google account, sign in there. And once you're in your drive, there is a button that says new. When you click on it, you'll go to Google Sheets and that will open a brand new spreadsheet for you to create your spreadsheet. So I'll go ahead and name that budget spreadsheet there and we are going to start now. So again, like I said, this first spreadsheet that we're going to build right here is going to be so simple that anybody can use it, anybody can make it, and all of the different applications that you might be using, Microsoft Excel, um, OpenOffice, or again here, Google Drive spreadsheet, you can use these to build this and it will work just the same. So the first thing that we're going to do is in the very top, we're going to put the month and year that it is. So for me, it's January of 2017 as I'm recording this video, so I will go ahead and put that. Then you can make this next part as simple or as hard as you would like. So you're going to have the names of different things that are going in and out. There are three main categories that I want you to remember when you're putting that in. You have your income, you have expenses, and then you might have some sort of savings or other areas that you're taking some money out from and these are going to be our main three categories that we are going to manage so honestly your budget could be as simple as having just these three columns here but we're going to make this a little bit better so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in budget and right next to that actual and difference so inside of income, if we think that we're going to make a certain amount, that's how much we will put here. So if I think I'm going to make $4,000 in the month of January, I would put $4,000 in there. For expenses, let's say that I believe that I'm going to spend $3,500, I would put that in here. And for savings, let's say that I'm going to save the other $500, I would put that here. Now again, these are just very broad and general categories. So we're going to want to blow them out. We'll get them bigger here. So expenses, we're going to add a line underneath it by inserting a row above. And the way that I do that, if you're not super familiar with spreadsheets, 
is you go to the right click on your mouse over top of the row that you want to insert one above or below. So expenses, if I click on savings and insert one above, it will go below expenses. Then I can start to name my expenses. So I might want a lot of rows here. So I'll, I will enter them in bulk by selecting a couple of rows and we can add those in. So I can say insert one above and add a few here. All right, so I have those rows added and underneath expenses, things that I want in there are my mortgage. I'm going to want electricity. I'm going to need my, let's think, what else do I have? A gas bill. I pay my sewer bill. I pay a cell phone bill. And you can make these exactly how you want them to be. Now my expenses line, I don't like it above there. I actually am going to want it below. So I'm going to remove that and we'll put expenses underneath everything. And what I want to do here is I want to have the total of all of these be my total of expenses. So I can put in there equals sign and then a parenthesis, oh sorry, sum, S-U-M, then a parenthesis, and I push the up arrow, and then while holding the shift key, I can push up as many times as I need to in order to get to the very top of the area that I want to add together. Then I'll close that with a parenthesis, and it will give me expenses of zero, because I haven't entered anything in yet. So let's say my mortgage is $1,200, my electricity is 60, gas bill is 60, sewer is 28, cell phone bill is 95. Now my total expenses is 1,443. Now these aren't in dollars or anything as of this point, but we're not worried about that yet. I will worry about that later. Then underneath income, if I want to divide that out, again, I can do a similar process. Let's say I want to have my income so Quincy's income and my wife's income and let's say I make 2,000 of that and she makes 2,000 of that and again I will do the equal sign sum open the parenthesis arrow up one time hold shift push the arrow up again let go of shift close the parenthesis and now I have four thousand dollars as my income so I am now building my budget. It's as easy as that. You make as many rows as you need in order to add in all of the different things that you might have to pay for. If you want to add to this area right here of expenses, now that I've created my sum function in there, I can go to the row 12 in my spreadsheet and insert one above. Now you'll notice if I click on this, it is only summing these ones right here. So I will actually need to adjust this to go to row 12. You'll see it says that it wants to go through row seven to 11, and I can change that to row 12. And now whatever I add in here, will add into the expenses. So I could write something else. Maybe I pay on a credit card and my minimum payment is $75. It's super low because they want me to pay for it forever. So now, in the other columns, actual, we're going to want to add our actuals together. So I'm going to sum those and I will sum them the same way. So again, equal sign SUM, then an open parenthesis, going to select the two cells that I want and then close the parenthesis. And you can actually do this by clicking. If that's easier for you, open the parenthesis and click in the box above and drag your mouse until you cover the full area and then you can close it. There's also another way that you can do that, which takes a little bit longer. You can type the equal sign, S-U-M, open the parenthesis, select the first cell, put a comma, select another cell, a comma. You can select any cell you want, comma, another cell. All those cells will start to add together, but I don't want to do that. I want just these two. So now I have my actuals here. And what I like to do so that I can see exactly what fields I can enter stuff into, I will open this up and highlight them in another color. So I know that these are the areas that I will be putting my information into. And then the difference is going to be the difference between your actual and your budget. So you'll take the actual or the budget, I'm sorry, and you'll subtract out your actual. So the difference is going to be $2,000. 
Now in here, oh, I'm sorry, it's actually the other way around. You're going to take your actual, subtract your budget. So I am currently $2,000 short based on my actuals for my income. And I've got that here, and I'm also going to want to do another sum of that. So I can do equals SUM, and I can pull that up here. So now I have a negative $4,000 variance on my income. However, when January 2017th, when I get paid $2,000, I will come in, put in my $2,000, and it will show that now I have a difference of zero. And I'm only $2,000 short. So I will do the same here, equals the actual minus my budget. Now on this one, I'm going to do it the other way around because this is the expense side of things. So I've got my budget minus my actuals, which means I'm actually $1,200 ahead until I go to pay my mortgage. When I pay my mortgage, then I'm not ahead anymore. I'm right on track. But let's say my electricity bill only comes in at $45. That way, when I take my budget and subtract my actuals, I'm now $15 ahead. And you can put that in for every line. And again, these are backwards, so make sure that you do up here, it is your actual minus your budget. And over here, it's your budget minus your actual. And savings will typically be the same, so it shouldn't go either way. It doesn't actually matter, but again, you'll go your budget minus your actual and basically you'll be $500 ahead if you haven't paid it, but once you do pay it, then you're $500 right on, on target. Now you can take these and you can actually copy the formulas down by dragging or auto-filling in Excel, or you can type them all in manually by doing equals the cell minus another cell, and you have that here. And again, we will do a sum, and I will arrow up, hold shift, and I will highlight those. So now I can see that my expenses are different by $273 I'm ahead, my income is $2,000 behind, my savings is $0 in there, and I can do a total sum. And again, I do this by using the commas. I want to sum that one, and I want to sum this one, and I want to sum this one. So those are all the totals. This is my total value, my total value, and my total value which means that I am negative $1,727 behind on my plan because I was $2,000 behind, but I got ahead in my expenses, so now I'm only behind by $1,700. I can do the same here to say that if I had done my income minus my expenses minus my savings, then I would have had $1,982 at the end of my month. But what actually happened was that I only earned $2,000, I had expenses of $1,245, and I saved $500, which means I only had $255 left at the end of the month. And this can be your month end. Now this right here is your simple budget spreadsheet. You have now created a simple budget spreadsheet. And like I said, you can actually budget your entire month, your entire year by creating a template just like this for each month. But what we're going to do is if you follow along in more videos, we will start to make this more complex, we'll make it look more beautiful, and we'll have it do more things for you, and we'll continue to do that uh, so that we can work together. Now the reason why I prefer Google Drive here is because then I can access it from anywhere as I go. If I have an Excel spreadsheet, I would have to upload it to Google Drive every time I save it, and then I would be able to download it wherever I am, or same with OpenOffice. So I've chosen to do it in Google Drive. However, you can do it anywhere and however you want. In fact, my other template is built in Microsoft Excel because it has better functionality and a little bit more power behind it. But And I prefer to upload that every month so that, or every time I update it so that my wife can go on and download it and view where we're at as well. It doesn't matter, it's up to you, but this is where we're going to end today. You now have your income, your expenses, and your savings all budgeted for January of 2017 or whatever month you're doing with a month-end amount showing you how well you should have done, how well you actually did, and the difference. It may still look pretty basic to you, and it is, but it'll get the job done. This is a budget. You created a budget spreadsheet all by yourself. That's awesome. 
So we're going to continue moving forward in this series. If you continue watching, we'll make it more beautiful, more robust. We'll have it do greater things. And if you have questions or comments or you want to know how to do something specific that you've been thinking about, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to work around what you're looking to do. Just let me know. We'll see you next time. And if you join us, all you have to do is subscribe to become a budgeteer. We're budgeting on this channel all the time. And I hope you'll join me in that. Come budget with me, budgeteer. Thank you for watching. I'm extremely glad to have you here. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up. For more awesome videos, make sure you are subscribed.